Alrighty guys, it's time for a top 5 worst blasters of 2016 video because you have to make both videos apparently. I feel like I should be less excited for these and the video has to be faster. Why? I'm tired. And apparently these are very loud videos to make. So we'll get right into it and try and be speedy quick. This is the Shardfire Delta. It is our honorable mention. Why is it an honorable mention? Well, it's not a particularly bad blaster. It was just expensive and didn't come with any of the things that made the Shardfire cool to begin with. So it doesn't transform. It's just a basic breech-loading pistol and it's not very good at that. There are other better breech-loading pistols. I've made an entire video about that, but the Shardfire Delta was expensive, remains somewhat expensive, uh, isn't particularly attractive as there aren't many Elite Blue Blasters being made, and no matter how spinnable it is, that will not save it from the list. So on it goes as an honorable mention, this was not a very exciting blaster this year. It was a complete and total recoloring of a blaster that we didn't like too terribly much the first time. Number five is the Lightning Bow. Didn't your Lightning Bow break during the review? Yes! It broke during the review. That's terrible value. Even if it didn't break, and even after a full modification, which was a bit of work, it still doesn't hit as hard as the Thunderbow. The Thunderbow is better, holds more ammo, and is way more fun. In addition to that, it has semi-auto shots and takes advantage of both bows actuating, or bow arms actuating. This is just a string that attaches to a spring inside here. This is basically a glorified big shock at over like double the price. This is terrible value. Sure, modified it will fire some rival rounds, but that doesn't make up for all of its sins. It's huge, it's egregious, it doesn't even look like a Mega Blaster on account of being more white than red, and it's just ultimately a completely unexciting flop, particularly since the Thunderbow, in my opinion, is still the best of the Mega Blasters, or at least like, I mean, the, the Thunderbow is the best Mega Blaster, best range is best fun, it's, it's just the best. Number four on our list is the Ravager. This is an incisor, not a Ravager. So I thought that I had a Ravager, I actually thought that I had two, and I distinctly remember giving away one. I give away a bunch of blasters every year around this time, um, and I must have given away the only one that I had. No big deal, the Ravager was an eight shot Springer blaster that looked a lot like the incisor, but whereas the incisor is cool and takes advantage of this aesthetic, the Ravager looked kind of cool and was just a really expensive Smart AR Springer with a lot of moving parts that could not work. It was not the best. It was a perfectly good waste of a Springer pump action slot that I would have much rather seen go into some sort of CS blaster. There's another Springer pump action blaster on this list. I'm not happy about how that was played the entire year. Spoilers. Number three on this list is actually three blasters. It's the glow shot, it's the bow strike, it's the clamp down. Why? Because these are garbage. They're just fancy jolts. We already have a ton of jolts. They make a new jolt for every line it seems, and the jolt is fine. It's already the most compact you can make a single shot tiny Springer blaster. It's great if you want to hang a blaster on a necklace or a lanyard. It's awesome. There's nothing wrong with the jolt. The jolt, in fact, is the benchmark for these blasters. So why are the other ones so bad? Well, I've got to find them now. They're way bigger than they need to be, which makes them clunky. They're not as easy to do those things with as the Jolt, and they're ergonomic nightmares compared to the Jolt. The Jolt is already so small that it makes like actual concealed carry firearms look good. These are terrible because you're getting awful performance out of something that's already uncomfortable to hold. I don't like these at all. I'm tired of them showing up in every line. These guys both miss two of the metrics that are very, very important for me in my reviews, and they are both more expensive and less effective than their counterparts. So they replace production line room for jolts, and they are more expensive and they are less ergonomic. They're just a terrible trade-off in every capacity. So I don't know why they cost as much as they do, but I don't think they're good value. Unless you want to take your jolt to a rave. The Devil Dealer is number two on the list because, because you broke my heart, Devil Dealer. I wanted to love you so bad, you just, you let me down. 
Seriously, the Double Dealer is a pump action springer. That's like my favorite thing. It's a pump action springer with slam fire and integrated magazine storage. That's win, 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 and it does something unique. Right? Wrong. The Double Dealer doesn't do any of those things well. And you put a magazine in here. Fumble, fumble. You can't actually hold the blaster properly anymore. You can't do it this way if you're right-handed, this way if you're left-handed, or if you really wanted to be nonsensical, it's not working that way, and it sure isn't working Omega Gangster style. There's just no way that this is going to function. These are, however, the one saving grace to the Double Dealer. The only thing keeping this poor heartbreaker from being number one is that these are pretty sweet. They're basically P-Mags from Hasbro themselves. Now, a lot of people like to make fun of the Double Dealer. They make fun of it by calling it the Airplane. I spent a lot of 2016 on airplanes, and airplanes are magical and cool, guys. Period. Airplanes are sweet. The Double Dealer becomes quite cumbersome when you put these extra magazines or anything bigger than this certainly on it, and frankly, it just doesn't work that well. That's the biggest problem with it, is if it weren't an ergonomic nightmare to actually store the stocks in here, it would be a very comfortable, very compact pump action springer that did something cool with two shots at a time. The problem with it is that it doesn't ever do two shots at a time. It jams all the time. It likes rolling darts over in and of itself, and then it'll sometimes, like, it's, just, it's so, fickle and hard to play with. It has let me down at more wars than I can remember. I've taken it to at least three SE&C wars and I get disappointed in it and revert to the death dealer every time. So this airplane crashes. Bad. The number one worst blaster of 2016 is another pump action springer. I'm detecting a pattern here. Drac might be biased. You keep using that word? And I don't think you know what it means. Biased. The Battle Scout is a ridiculously expensive blaster. It's ridiculously expensive because it comes with a camera. The camera is bad. Technically, the camera is not that bad. The camera is just outdated and the audio is what's really, really bad. So, take away the camera. What are you left with? Bad. Lots of bad. The worst blaster of 2016 bat. Why? Well, let's start at the front. This is a clip, not a magazine. Yes, I know the difference. Yes, I say clipazine. I do it because it annoys gun people. It's a silly, silly debate. But this is non-compatible with any Nerf products. Now, just like Boomco, which does the same thing, there's no excuse for this one. They could just as easily have made this a pump-action, magazine-fed blaster. It could have been side-feeding, a la Rampage, or it could have been feeding from the bottom like an Elite Alpha Trooper, in which case it would have been a really cool angled foregrip blaster. But it's not. It has this thing. Do you know what you do when you're out with this thing? Nothing. Because it only comes with one and nothing else works with that clip. It is a terrible design choice to take a platform built, the InStrike platform, on cross-compatibility of things, give it all of the nice things like barrel and stock attachment points and rails, and then put garbage on them and make it so that it won't work with any of the InStrike box-style magazines. That's crazy. In addition to that, it's an ergonomic nightmare. The handle is not comfortable because it is a modulus blaster, and for some reason it's just really weird with this notch here. For my hands, it's it's very bad. I know because I've recut this segment three times and I'm getting tired of holding it. The angle foregrip, actually okay, but does not detract from the sins of being $80. Oh, I didn't mention that it's $80? Yes. This was meant to be the flagship blaster of the Modulus line, but it was on sale for $18. Why? Well, because Hasbro saw this ship burning on the Pacific and decided that maybe before anyone would notice that it was on fire, they would sink it to the bottom of the ocean by trying to sell them out. But it didn't work. Now they're back at like $60 in most stores and they seem to still exist. Do not buy this blaster. It is not very good. I didn't buy them $18 and there wasn't a limit as far as I can remember. Normally, when Hasbro puts blasters on sales, good blasters, they give them a three product per order limit. 
Um, this one didn't have that. So when hammer shots go on sale for six, seven dollars, I buy as many as I can because they're a really good blaster. When this went on sale, I bought zero of them because I don't want any more of them. I bought this one to review for you, and now it's gotten to live on as the number one worst blaster of 2016. Disagree with me? Comments below. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed.